thing you haven't got any nephews and nieces. Uh, what's that, Mrs. Bridges? The time you take writing out your Christmas cards. Oh, well, it's more of a hobby, really. Handwriting. Yes, I know. It's your brother-in-law, as usual, I suppose. Yes, we've been exchanging seasonal greetings now for 15 years. Oh, well, I think it's nice for a man to have a hobby. Especially a proper as one as handwriting. Let me tell you, a ladyship could take a leaf out of your book. The menu she sends me down sometimes, I can't make head a tale of them. Oh, well, the mistress of a household does have a great many duties to perform, Mrs. Bridges. Oh, well, no, I wasn't meaning to criticise Miss Drudson. It's just I sometimes wonder whether she gets what she asked for. Who on earth can that be? We're only expecting Mrs. Kerbridge for tea. But that's not for fame. Hudson, I'm early. Have I brought everyone on the hop? Uh, not at all, Mrs. Kerbridge. These lovely motor cars puts all our timing out. Thank you. Is Mother in? Uh, she's in the morning room, madam. What does all this mean, Rose? I understood Mrs. Kerbridge was simply coming for tea. I know, Mr. Hudson, there's been a change of plan. But I have not been informed. I know you haven't, Hudson. I only decided this morning. Help Thomas with the luggage, would you? Hello, my darling. Hello. Oh, very early. Mm. Not only that, Mother dear, but I've come to stay. You don't mind, do you? Only Lawrence had to go and visit an aunt in Shropshire, and Christmas with Rose in Greenwich didn't seem much fun, so I thought we'd both come here. Oh, Lord, you're not doing your cards already, are you? I haven't given them a thought. You mean Lawrence is staying in Shropshire over Christmas? He may. But you didn't go with him. I didn't want to see his boring aunt. It's your first Christmas together. Oh, Mother, what does that matter? No doubt there'll be others. He did offer to take me, but I told him I preferred you and Papa. Aren't you pleased? Oh, yes, of course. If one has some prior warning of these things, one can make the necessary arrangements. As it is, the room needs airing. A good dust. And Brenda's cut her hand badly in a broken vase, so she can't manage it. But don't look at me, Mr. Radson. I don't even work here. There's a nice room to come home to. But it's beautiful. Thank you, darling. Any jolly parties in store? Oh, the London Dairies. Can I come? Yes, yes, of course you can. Do you remember that other time after I came back from Germany? And you all had such hopes for me and I dashed them all by behaving disgracefully. Oh, what a long time ago that seems. Talking of disgrace, I had a lovely letter from James the other day. It was really happy for the first time, as if he'd got things right at last. Has he, do you think? Yes, we had a very reassuring letter from Colonel Pitt saying how well he'd settled down. He said James is a great asset to the regimental polo team. And Sarah? Sarah? Oh, well, she's at Southwold, as you know. She's being well taken care of. Yes, I've no doubt. Darling, you're not... What? Oh, pregnant, you mean? No, Mama. Sorry. Well, it is a bit soon. Shall we have some tea? Then we can have a lovely long talk before your father gets home and monopolises you. I found it in the dicky of our motor car, Mrs. B. Oh. For me? What, to be disposed of as you think fit? Oh, well, I don't know. Well, it weren't needed at Greenwich, see, so I thought I'd find a good home for it. I mean, you're fond of animals, and you're... Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very thoughtful of you, my boy. Very thoughtful indeed. Now, take up the sugar and I consider you're taking advantage of my loyalties, Mr. Hudson. And who taught you to use such long wads, Rose? Influence of a poet's household, eh, Rosie? I don't care what it's the influence of. All I know is I'm being used. Where's Edward, for heaven's sake? Come, you heard about Edward. He got took in the night. Took? Yes, he was rushed off to the hospital last Friday with his appendix. I believe he's progressing quite satisfactorily. Well, I don't know. Brenda cut her hand. It was taken off to hospital. Not a very lucky household, is it? Oh, what about yours then, Rose, eh? Um, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Mrs. Bridges. Oh, yes, you do. What's Miss Elizabeth doing here? What's been going on? Now, now, Mrs. Bridges, you know better than ask our Rose for any tittle-tattle. I only want to know what we all want to know, Miss Trudson. 
Don't tell me your ears haven't been burning, too. Rose, get your coat off. Take the tea up. Oh, that's not fair, Mr Hudson. Besides, I can't serve morning room tea dressed like this. Her ladyship won't mind, just this once. Here, I'll give you hand if you like, Rose. Oh, I can manage. You know, that girl is assuming far too much independence for her own good. Maybe she has to, where she works now. This your work, Mr Hudson? <laughs> That's his hobby. And right in. I make a study of it, yes. Oh, very nice. What sort of stuff do you write, apart from Christmas cards? What do I write? Well, I... Well, I copy out passages from the newspapers. Copy? What's the point? The point? Yes, I mean other people's stuff. Why not something of your own? You know, a poem or your own thoughts. Well, he does write his daily journal, don't you, Miss Ranson? Oh, the tittle tattle lie. Well, that's, that's a start, I suppose. You can always sell it if times get hard. <laughs> I was only joking, Mr. Hudson. Well, of course he was, Mr. Hudson. Where's your sense of humour? Hello, Rose. What are you doing here? Helping out, Mr. Bellamy. Oh, aren't you required in Greg? Well, um, uh, Mrs. Kerbridge is here, sir. Oh, that's right. Of course she was coming to tea. My angel. Hello, Papa. Oh, lovely to see you. And looking so bright, bright as a button. Hello, my dear. Hello, darling. Lawrence has had to visit an aunt in Shropshire, so Elizabeth's come to stay. Isn't that nice? That's wonderful. That's too many frocks for a short visit. Mrs. Kerbridge always takes a lot of frocks with her. You should have seen how many she took with her when she went on her honeymoon to Vienna, and that was only a fortnight. Oh, there's no point in keeping up this pretense, Rose. I can put two and two together, even if no-one else can. Yes, I'm sure you can, Miss Roberts, and that's just about the limit of your education. How dare you talk to me like that? Oh, I dare, all right, because we're on equal footing now, remember? I'm a lady's maid now, just like you. Proper ladies' maids do not carry up trays to the morning room or dust the bedrooms. Mr Hudson. Uh, Mr Hudson, I was wondering, in view of your shortage of staff, whether I... Perhaps might lend a hand. That won't be necessary, thank you, Mr Watkins. We can manage. We can't. Not with half the staff took sick. I could wait at table, Mr Hudson. I'm not without experience, as Rose will vouch. Oh, go on, Mr Hudson. The boy's made a kind offer. Why don't you let him help you out? Well, if her ladyship finds it acceptable, I suppose he may. Oh, please, Miss Roberts. Oh, sorry, Mr Hudson. Oh, who are you? Me? That's Mr. Watkins. He's Mr. Kerbridge's manservant. Oh, yes, I've heard about you. Nothing bad, I hope. Not yet. Are you staying too? Well, why should he? Mr. Watkins is going to drive the motor car back to Greenwich after we've all had our dinner, aren't you, Mr. Watkins? Elizabeth's had a letter from James, darling. She really thought he sounded happy, didn't you? That's good. Has he fallen in love, do you think? He didn't mention it. Well, that's what he needs, some nice young governess he can bring home as his bride. Oh, father, what a dreadful thing to wish on your son. Not at all. All the best girls are going out to India as governesses. It's a wonderful opportunity for them. Yes, Felicity Davenport. And Railton's daughter, Daphne. Felicity landed a major. Oh, good for Felicity. What did he weigh? Darling. <laughs> well, you do make him sound like a prized trout. What would James be? A sort of eel, perhaps? <laughs> and Lawrence, what would he be? I think this is a silly game. No, it isn't. It's illuminating. Lawrence. I think I see Lawrence's... a place. A place? A place. Why a place? I don't know. I just see him as one. I don't think that's very illuminating. It is to me. How's his poetry getting along? Has he written anything lately? No, nothing. Aren't you his inspiration? Apparently not. Oh, darling, one can't write poetry to order. Lawrence has a lot on his mind. Adjusting to married life. Living in Greenwich. What's wrong with Greenwich? Nothing to you, but it stifles Lawrence. Stifles him? Why? I thought I'd do some Christmas shopping tomorrow, darling. Would you like to come with me? We could give each other ideas like we used to. Do you remember choosing things for James and Papa? I don't want to be little again, Mother. I don't think your mother meant that you... Yes, she did. She sees my marriage in ruins and she wants to protect me by making me little again. I don't want that. What did you say? Your marriage in... In, in ruins? What on earth do you mean? It's plain enough, haven't you guessed? I've given enough hints. What do you think I'm doing here? Darling, please. 
pas devant les domestiques. Ils savent bien la situation, tous les deux. So does Hudson now. Do you mean what you say? I'm sorry, Papa, yes. After only six months, I can't believe it. No, of course you can't believe it, Mama. You don't want to believe it. You'll have to face the gossip and the sniggering of your friends. But can't you think beyond that? Can't you think of me for one? <laughs> You think you got it all out of her Don't pocket. you tell me, Rose. Miss Lizzie. And don't call me Miss Lizzie. I'm a married woman. Married, which is more than you'll ever be. What? At least I've tried. I've offered myself, but you, you've never offered yourself to anyone. So how can you give me advice? I wasn't trying You and to. Thomas, you think I didn't hear you late at night. Teasing him and then stopping. Let me tell you, Rose, that unless you're prepared to give yourself utterly and risk making a fool of yourself, you'll never get anything in life. You'll end up withered here inside. I mean, look at you already. At least I'm never enough like you. Well, I'm off now, Mrs. Bridges. Oh, back to Greenwich then, are you? Back to Greenwich, yes, for the time being. Oh, well, we'll be seeing you again soon, I expect. I hope so. I do hope so, Mrs. B. <laughs> I've done the dishes, so you'll have a nice clean kitchen in the morning. I knew you'd do something like that. Oh, you're a good boy, Thomas. You are, really. Oh, well, you're not a bad cook, neither. Oh. <laughs> good night, Mrs. Oh. B. <laughs> good night, my dear. Good night. Good night, Rose. Rosie? Yes, Rose? Rosie? Rosie? What's the matter, love? What is it? It's not what happened at dinner, is it? We knew that was finished. We've got other fish to fry. It didn't, that. Well, what then? After all our years together, all the things we've shared, to say such cruel things. What things, love? <laughs> Mrs. Kirby's done what she said. I can't repeat them. Of course you can. Uh, I can't. I can't. Come on. You can tell Thomas. <laughs> Let me go. I roll, roll. She seemed a bit upset, like. Well, it wasn't me, Mr. Hudson. Good night, Mr. Watkins. No, no, hang on. Good I'm night. A... Come in. Oh, I'm glad it's you. Is Mother very upset? Yes, she is, rather. She's gone to her room. Uh, may I? Yes, do. Oh. You want explanations? Do you want to give them? Is it really in ruins, as you say? Ruins can be restored. Not these ones. Any special problem? No, no. Are you sure? No, I told you. Lawrence doesn't want a wife, that's all. But it was Lawrence who wanted to get married. You were the one for the bohemian life. Yes, well, there you are. Uh, he couldn't cope with the responsibility. But how about his friends, his fellow artists? How'd you get on with them? Did, did they accept you? I suppose so. But obviously I was always going to be judged in terms of what he produces, his poetry, what I inspired. I inspired nothing. So he took his revenge on you? No, not exactly. He didn't spend enough time with me for that. Well, you can't be said to be a negative influence, surely. It's a nice debating point, Papa, but we're not in the House of Commons. Hmm. Oh, Rose, run me a bath, would you? Yes, madam. Oh, and take this down to be mended. I seem to have caught it on something. Uh, does Lawrence know you've left home? No, I don't think so. What will you say when he finds out? He'll be relieved. 
He's not very good at taking the initiative. Darling, are you sure you haven't left in haste? Your mother feels, and I must say, I find it hard to disagree with her, that you haven't really given it much time. How much time do you need to know that you've made a mistake? I'm sorry, Papa, it's over. No hope at all? None. Are you absolutely sure? I'm absolutely sure. Then we must get in touch with Dylan and put the matter in his hands. Dylan? Geoffrey Dylan, our solicitor. You want it ended legally, don't you? Yes, but must we use him? He's so dry and chilly. James said that during his troubles he felt as if he was facing Judge Jeffreys. <laughs> I know how he felt. But Geoffrey Dillon is loyal and discreet and quite simply the best there is. I'll see him in the morning. No, don't, don't worry. And do try and understand your mother's feelings. They may seem a bit off the mark, but they're nonetheless real and they need careful handling from both of us. Papa, thank you for treating me like a woman and not an hysterical child. Even though I may be. Oh, the poor girl. To have such a thing happen. She's only a baby. Well, I guessed, of course. The minute I saw those frocks, I guessed it was no casual visit. We'd all done our share of guessing, Miss Roberts. Even before the frocks. Yes, well, now that we've all expressed our feelings, I think we should let the matter rest. But it was you who informed us, Mr Hudson. I informed you, Miss Roberts, to prevent you hearing it from other ears. Rose has taken it badly. I passed her on the stairs just now and she'd been crying. I think you'll find that Rose's distress is related to quite another matter, Miss Roberts. Oh? What's that, Miss Roberts? Whenever you mind for the moment, Mrs Bridges. In the meantime, I think we should all be in our guard. Could you lend us a needle, please, Miss Roberts? Mrs Kirbridge wants this mending. Thanks. Well now, Mrs Kirbridge. Must you call me that, Sir Geoffrey? It does sound a little hollow. Elizabeth. It's hardly being familiar. You've known all about me since the day I was born. I regret that my knowledge of you is confined merely to a handful of facts. Your birth dates, when money was put into trust for you, things of that nature. Well, doubtless you mean to change all that. How do you mean? Well, don't I have to use you as a kind of confessional? Tell you intimate details I wouldn't even tell my parents? It is sometimes necessary to delve a little. The law requires it. All right, let's get it over with. Well, first we have to find grounds, since I take it that you're to be the petitioner. I'm sorry, I don't understand. It's you who wish to terminate the marriage. Oh, yes, I think so, if that is allowed. It is in certain circumstances. It may be necessary to discuss matters with your husband. He's in Shropshire visiting an aunt. Has he deserted you? In favour of his aunt? No. I'm sorry. I think I, I've deserted him. A woman can divorce her husband only on the grounds of adultery coupled with desertion or adultery coupled with cruelty. You mean we choose one of those? In effect, we decide on the relevant course. Well, neither of those is relevant. What else have we got? Well, there is, of course, the possibility of an annulment, grounds for which are, for example, impotence on the part of the husband. Might that be relevant? Think carefully, Elizabeth. What exactly is impotence, legally speaking? Thank you, Hudson. Sir, Sir Geoffrey Dillon here. He's in the morning room, sir, with Mrs Kerbridge. Thank you. Uh, they've been alone in conference together for some while now, sir. Her ladyship is up in her room awaiting the outcome. Thank you, Hudson. Sir. You're saying, Elizabeth, that sexual intercourse has never taken place between you and your husband? You do understand the legal definition? Yes. You've encouraged him, you've shown yourself willing, but... He seems to find the act... Repugnant. That's what he says. But how can he? I'm not repugnant to him. Not in our normal daily life, but when I lie beside him in bed and I reach out for him, he doesn't see. Do you know if he's ever had a satisfactory relationship with a woman? I realize you may not be able to. There was someone, yes. An intimate relationship? I always thought so. But now you're not sure? No. 
Well, I think we may have the grounds. You mean that's all we need? It should be. A simple medical inspection. Medical inspection of whom? Of both of you. I'll speak to your mother. It needn't concern you. But it does concern me. I'm to be examined. Don't be alarmed, my dear. It's a formality. Now, shall we call your mother? Oh, Rose, is Sir Geoffrey Dillon still in the morning room? Yes. He's finished with Mrs. Kirbridge on her own, and I just went to fetch Lady Marjorie and Mr. Bellamy. I have no doubt a satisfactory conclusion is being reached. Oh? What would you call a satisfactory conclusion? An annulment, of course. Does that mean them splitting up? The marriage has failed, Rose. How would you know? You don't even work there. Rose. Too many thinking people giving too many uninformed opinions. Rose, you're forgetting yourself. Am I? If I may give you a little advice, my girl, forget it. Forget who? Oh, come on now, Rose. You can't fool me. I know you too well. You've got yourself emotionally involved with someone. It's unfortunate, but hardly surprising. Proximity is next to familiarity. But you're a sensible girl, Rose. It may be painful, but it's simply a question of attitude, of, of stealing yourself and seeking diversions. Perhaps you could take up a hobby. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Hudson. Well, if nobody wants me anymore, I think I'll go and do my Christmas shopping. Well, how was it, Geoffrey? I do hope she was sensible. Oh, yes, we've discovered the cause of the problem. Which is? Quite simply, the marriage is unconsummated. What? It's Lawrence who is the unwilling party, not Elizabeth. Lawrence? Good God. Well, what's the matter with the fellow? Poor child. We shouldn't have too much difficulty in arranging an annulment, but we do need proof of virginity. Either your own doctor, or if she'd prefer a more impersonal but sympathetic figure, may I suggest my friend Sir William Hanning, recently appointed to the royal household. It's you. Good evening, sir. Just hanging some of your suits up, sir. Shall I switch your light on? No. She's gone, then. Mrs. Kerbridge has gone to stay with her parents, sir. In Eaton Place. I know where they live. Thank you. Has Rose gone, too? Yes, sir. And Mrs. Fellows? Got to stay with a married daughter, sir. Waiting instructions. I can recall her. No, don't do that. It's just you, then. That's right, sir, just me. Will you be staying the night here, sir? Uh, yes, but I shan't be going to bed just yet. Do you want some champagne? Ah, uh, no, thank you, sir. Why not? Well, if you insist. Oh, I don't insist. Have some if you want some. Don't if you don't. Say it's not unpleasant. It eh? damn well shouldn't be unpleasant, Thomas. It's a present from my aunt, and she knows about these things. Well, what's the news from Eaton Place? Am I persona non grata? Why, I don't think anything is quite as drastic as that, sir. What are they saying in the servants' quarters? Well, I wouldn't have thought the opinions of servants held much interest for someone like yourself, sir. Yeah, well, you're quite right, Thomas. You're absolutely right. Who cares about the opinions of servants? I trust your aunt has not been taken sick, sir? Taken sick? Why should she? Necessitating your unexpected return. Necessitating? <laughs> oh, Tom, you are getting pedantic. Who taught you to speak like that, eh? Hudson, the Scotsman. Only servile servants talk like that. You're not one of them. Am I not, sir? You know you're not. 
Why have you come back then, sir? Ah! That's better. Because I was feeling wretched, and I missed my wife's company. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Then you're a fool. I return for an assignation with another lady which requires your utmost discretion. Do you believe that? No, sir. No, sir. Why not, sir? Because... Because I... you think I'm homosexual. No, sir. I, th I think... What? Hmm? Come on, man, what do you think? I, I think you're a romantic, sir. A romantic? What in heaven's name do you know about romantics? I, I read books, sir. Yes, well, Thomas, yes, you're right. I am a romantic. I can love a woman. I love my wife, but... but not the way she wants. Not here! Oh, sit down, man! For God's sake, sit down! That's Thomas. Thomas, do you like taking ladies to bed? Huh? Do you? Do you enjoy the sexual act? Well, uh, yes, I have to admit, I do. Uh... I, I do fancy it, sir. You do fancy it? Yes, well, I'm only normal in that. Normal? Case. Thomas, will you stay with me? I beg your pardon? Will you stay with me as my man? Well, that's, that's surely your decision, sir. I mean, after all, I am still in your employ. But my wife engaged you. Yes, uh, for you, sir. That's true. Is that, that's very true. And you haven't taken sides. One tries to keep a proper balance. You can't do that, Thomas. Either you're with me or you're against me. Now, choose. Choose. Choose now. Well, in, in, in that case, naturally, I am with you, sir. Do you mean that sincerely? You wouldn't betray me? Oh, no, not at all, sir. Thomas, would you be going to Eaton Place in the near future? Well, I could do, sir. Why, would you like me to take a message? Yes, that wouldn't be a bad idea. You tell my wife. Uh, well, it might be best if I got Rose to tell her. Uh, yes, all right. All right, well, you tell Rose to tell Mrs. Cabbage. Um, well, tell her to say... Thomas, would you think of something for me, please? Hemorrhoids, my dear Dylan. They and they alone won the Battle of Waterloo. It's a common medical fact. Who's hemorrhoids, Sir William? The Napoleons, dear lady. Oh. They gave him merry hell on the morning of June the 18th and caused him to make a late start. Poppycock, William. The British were ready for him whatever time he got up. <laughs> the British weren't ready for anything. Wellington was entirely dependent on his allies. Quite clearly, you're a Francophile, Sir William. Doesn't enter into it, my dear fellow. I'm interested in the relative merit of the two commanders, that's all. And I'm trying to tell old Dylan here that his hero, Wellington, was safe as houses and dull as ditch water. Whereas the Emperor had flair. Hit him at the centre. That was his tactic. Barbarously unsubtle. <laughs> How many soldiers have you in your collection, Sir William? Uh, my collection? Oh, flat models only. 14,926. Good gracious. Is the child ready? Uh, not quite, sir. She apologises for keeping you waiting. I'm in no hurry. Mrs Bridges? Has Mr Hudson said anything about me? Not that I know of, Thomas. I'll tell you why I asked. The other night uh, when I was here, I, I helped out with the dishes. Do you remember? I certainly do remember, and a very great help you were too. Well, we had a bit of a misunderstanding, Mr. Hudson and I. Oh? 
Yes, I was through there talking to Rose, you see, and he got the... Imp Hello, Thomas. What are you doing here? Well, I've got to see you, Rose. Oh, I haven't got time. I'm busy getting Miss Elizabeth ready for the doctor. You haven't seen Miss Roberts, have you? on a borrowed kerning, Thomas? The doctor? Hmm. Hasn't she told you? No. I don't tittle-tattle, Rose. You oh. know me. Probably haven't got around to it yet. Rose? Hmm? They're going to be divorced, then. Looks like it. Has, has anybody said what's going to happen to us? There'll always be a place for Rose in the Southwold family, Mr Watkins. What's your business here? Well, I've, uh, I've come with a message from uh, Mr Kerbridge to Mrs Kerbridge via Rose. And what is the message? Uh, well, it's private. <laughs> I don't believe a word. Uh, absolute <laughs> truth, I assure you. <laughs> Mrs. Kerbridge is ready, my lady. Thank you, Hudson. Would you show Sir William up to her room? Very good, my lady. If you'll follow me, Sir William. Yes, certainly. Excuse me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What a nice man. He'd have made a rotten general. <laughs> Come in. Good morning, my dear. Oh, Hudson. My lady. I wanted to have a word with you. Hudson, you must be aware of what's happening. Miss Elizabeth's marriage has not been a success for various reasons. A source of great sadness, my lady. Yes, however, we must be practical. Indeed. As the marriage is to be dissolved, the house at Greenwich will have to be sold and the staff there disbanded. Mrs. Fellows will be given a month's notice. Rose, of course, will return to us. That would leave Mr. and Mrs. Mert Kerbridge's manservant, my lady Thomas. Yes, and I've decided to ask him to come to us as chauffeur. He struck me as a young man of resource, and he does know about motor cars. But Pierce, my lady. Well, Pierce has already spoken to Mr. Bellamy about leaving us to go back to Lady Wanborough as head groom. You know as well as I do, Hudson, that Pierce has never really taken to the motor car, and we do need a good chauffeur. Uh, quite. Uh... If I may be so bold, my lady, I, I cannot bring myself to recommend Thomas. Oh, really? I agree. He's a young man of resource and familiar with motor cars, but I have grave doubts as to his moral character. Oh, forgive me for speaking so freely, my lady. Oh, please go on, Hudson. Has he done something particular to make you feel this? To be precise, he has trifled with Rosie's affections. She herself told you, sir? She had no need to, my lady. I inadvertently witnessed a scene in the servants' hall in which young Thomas, quite brutally in my opinion, reduced the poor girl to tears. I see. I have spoken with her. Oh, she's a sensible girl. I'm sure she'll soon recover. But not with Thomas in the premises, my lady. No. Well, thank you, Hudson. I'll, I'll have to think again. My lady. Feet off the table in this house, if you don't mind, Mr. Watkins. Put that thing out. Why are you still here? You've delivered your message. I'm just waiting for the answer, Mr. Hudson. Ah, Sir William. All to our satisfaction, I hope. There's nothing wrong, is there? No, dear lady. Her health is excellent, considering her condition. Her condition? Yes, I'm afraid we've been outgunned, outflanked and outmaneuvered on all sides. Our virgin bride is three months pregnant. Come in. Close the door. Sit down. Elizabeth, I always thought we had a special understanding of affection and trust. It seems I was sadly mistaken. Why? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? When we spoke the other evening, you led me to believe the failure of your marriage lay with Lawrence. I hope I didn't. When Sir Geoffrey questioned you, you told him a deliberate lie. You said the marriage had not been consummated. That's true, it hadn't. Are you saying that Lawrence is not the father of the child you're carrying? Yes. Then who in God's name is? It's not important. Well, of course it's important. Are you mad? Who is he? A friend of ours. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I may seem simple. But are you saying within six months of your marriage you took a friend, a mutual friend of both of you, to your bed? Yes. Then quite clearly I don't know you at all. Oh, come on, Father, it's not so awful. I've no doubt it was done in your day, too. Lawrence knew about it. He what? Of course he did. 
He couldn't please me himself in that direction, so he delegated the task. My God, with whom? When I find the young scoundrel, I'll thrash him. He's not a young scoundrel, and you won't thrash him. He's as eminent in his own field as you are, and about your age. It was all done with decorum and taste. What's his name? Must you really know? Yes, him? tell me. His name is Sir Edwin Partridge. He's Lawrence's publisher. I wouldn't go and see him if I were you. He's capable of causing a dreadful scandal. You realise what you've done, don't you? You've made it impossible for us to get your marriage annulled. Well, not on the grounds we discussed, obviously. On any grounds, your mockery of a marriage must go on. You must face the world as the proud parents of a bastard. Maybe Partridge. Don't make cheap jokes, Elizabeth. Already you've disgraced yourself and your mother. You know very well how these things get about. Do you want to make us a laughing stock of society? That's your real concern, isn't it? Your precious name. In all this mess, you can't actually bring yourself to think of me. How I might feel, can you? You can't see my humiliation. To be told I'm pregnant after telling Sir Geoffrey my, my husband hadn't even made love to me. Dear God, you feel wronged. You talk of affection and trust lost between us. What about me? Where's your affection for me when I most need it? Well, at least we know where we both stand. How we really feel about each other. At least I can make plans now. Elizabeth. And you can make your plans. Do what you like. I don't care. Richard, what on earth has happened between you? What will you do then, Rose, if Miss Elizabeth stays on here like she says she's going to? You'll have to sort out your position, won't you? Yes, I've been thinking about that, Mrs Bridges. Well, there's not room in this house for two ladies' maids. You might not have to worry about that, Miss Roberts. I might not be Miss Elizabeth's ladies' maid much longer. What do you mean, my girl? We haven't been getting on too well. She said some very unkind things about me. Oh, come on now, Rose, you're imagining things. Uh, Miss Elizabeth, unkind to you. You're just upset because of that other matter. What other matter? You know what I mean. Well, don't keep us in suspense, Miss Drudson. What is it? Well, concerning a certain Mr Watkins. Oh, what about him? I'm sure Rose doesn't want her private affairs aired in public. Suffice it to say that Mr Watkins will not be in the running for the post of chauffeur here when Mr Pierce gives up. Why not? What have you been up to? If he's not required in Greenwich, he ought to come and work here. It's only natural. It is not natural, Mrs Bridges, and Rose knows why. I don't, Mr Hudson. That young man has been playing fast and loose with our Rosie's affections. Here, yeah, how do you know what he's been playing fast and loose with? Was I not witness to an upset in this very room the other night, Rose, when he made you cry? Oh, that wasn't him, Mr Hudson. I was crying about Miss Elizabeth and the unkind things she said about me. It wasn't Thomas. He was trying to comfort me. He was being nice. There, now see what you've done. Are you sure, Rose? Of course I'm sure. So he can be chauffeur, yeah, now, if he wants to. You've got things a bit mixed up, Mr Hudson. You've done that young man an injustice, and if you've any human decency, which we all know you have, you'll put what you've done to rights. Come in. Darling. If you've come to be angry, no, I haven't. Your father's sorry. It was the heat of the moment. Try and see it from his point of view. As for you and me, I know we haven't always seen eye to eye. It's funny. James behaved just as badly. Well, unfortunately, shall we say. Somehow it's easier to forgive one son. That's not fair, is it? I was upset at first because it seemed you'd given in too easily. I realised that was wrong of me. Your father helped me see that. And now, of course, that I know what you've really suffered, I just... Oh, my darling. <laughs> we'll find a way out. We'll do everything we can. I promise you. Shh. It's all right. Good morning, Sir Geoffrey. Good morning, Mrs. Cabridge. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you yesterday, but you see, I, I didn't realise what the medical examination was for exactly. Clearly. Well, that should be Lawrence now. Lawrence? Coming here? 
Thank you, Hudson. Are the, uh, the vultures assembled? Her ladyship and Mr. Bellamy are in the morning room, sir, with Sir Geoffrey Dillon, the family solicitor. And the Queen Predator, my wife? And Mrs. Kerbridge is also with them, sir. Right. Darling, what wonderful news. Sir Geoffrey telephoned me this morning. Isn't it wonderful? I'm to be a father and you're to be grandparents. Are we gathered for a celebration? It's no use, Lawrence. I've told them everything. Everything? Well, surely not everything, my sweet. Everything that's relevant. Relevant to what, sir? Lawrence, we know you're not the father of Elizabeth's child. We also know from Elizabeth the reason why. Now, let me say at once, we feel no personal animosity towards you. These things happen. Nature cannot be overruled. Please believe that, Lawrence. We've simply asked you here to decide what's best to do for all our sex. Yes. <clears throat> I see. Well, I... Mr. Kerbridge, for obvious reasons, you must agree to accept official paternity of the child. For obvious reasons? Well, you'd hardly want the rather sordid facts of the case to be widely known. Are they so sordid? I mean, wouldn't it be more sordid to suppress the facts, to live a lie? And what do we tell the child? Do we keep it always from the truth? I think Elizabeth and I resolved our own particular difficulties in a mature and sensible way. Who knows, we may even set a fashion. Lawrence, neither Sir Geoffrey nor I have time to listen to your flippant modish theories. Now, just give us a straight answer. Will you or will you not accept paternity? And if I do? The marriage will continue in name for the time being. Later, we can arrange a judicial separation on some other grounds. Oh, yes, that's neat. Very neat. And what do we do in the meantime? Go back to Greenwich and take separate rooms? Or am I to be packed off to foreign parts like her poor unfortunate brother? A trip abroad might be a good plan, with all expenses paid and some form of allowance to follow. Returning when? In six months? In time for the birth celebrations? We are thinking of your best interests too, Lawrence. Yes. Thank you, Lady Marjorie. Well? Well, we haven't asked what Elizabeth wants yet. I can't live with you, Lawrence. I'm sorry. May I have a word with my wife in private, please? I can't see what You will accord me that privilege at least, sir. There's a fire in the dining room if you want to talk privately. In the dining room it is. Come along, Elizabeth. Assuming it all goes according to plan, those are the figures I'd suggest. If I might have a word with you, my lady. Yes, yes, Hudson. Yes, what is it, Hudson? It's about Thomas, my lady. You may remember... Oh, yes, you expressed doubts about him. Well, it seems I was misled, my lady. Will you go abroad? Well, I suppose I must, since Southwold money is to provide my steamship ticket. Not to mention my future bread and butter. You'll be happier than you were at Greenwich. Greenwich? Oh, yeah. Since I can't write poetry anymore, I've taken to flippant epitaphs. There's one for the plaque on our house. Lawrence Kerbridge lived here in married state from 1908 to 1908. What do we tell my publisher? Oh, God, I loved you. Congratulations, my dear boy. You like it here? Oh, I know you will. sure I will, Mrs. Bridges. Yes, we're all very friendly here. I think Miss Grudson ought to make a public apology to you. Oh, no, no, it, it's all over now, Mrs. B. You'll be able to get your hands on that Renault now, Thomas. Right. <laughs> I'll be called Watkins now I'm a proper chauffeur. Oh, you'll be asking them for a Rolls Royce to drive next. <laughs> oh, well, it's not a bad idea, neither. <laughs> Thomas, you're wanted upstairs. I am. What for? You'd better come and find out, hadn't you? But you can't take him! Damn it, he's mine! I won't allow it. My God, you've stripped me of everything else and now you want to take my man. Darling, don't be hysterical. Hysterical, my God, you... 
Thomas, thank God you're here. They're trying to take you from me, but I've told them that they can't, and he's pitched himself to me! Lawrence, do stop using such emotional words, and let's discuss the matter calmly. Come in, Thomas. All right, thank you, Hudson. Now, Thomas, has Hudson spoken to you about coming to work for us? Yes, Mum, he has. But you haven't accepted. Now, Thomas, we agreed. Agreed, sir? Thomas, listen, I shall be going abroad soon, possibly for a long time. Now, I can take you with me, show you the world. Isn't that what you wanted? To give yourself more scope? Isn't that what you once told me? Hmm? Listen, Thomas, what good will it do you to stay here, huh? Where will that get you? Do you want to end up like Hudson? For God's sake, man, I'm offering you life and hope. Well, well, I, I'm very grateful for your offer, sir. That's, that's very tempting. But... But? Yes, but what? Well, it's always been an ambition of mine to work in a noble household, sir. You choose servility? No, sir, I don't choose it. Go to the devil, Thomas. I've been very happy working. Go and roast in hell flames. I don't want sight nor sound of you again. Thank you, Thomas. That'll be all. For me, Miss Lizzie? Yes, Rose. An early Christmas present. No, no, I couldn't. Please, now, no arguments. I've been horrid to you these last few weeks, and I want to make it up. Thank you, Miss Lizzie. I'm going to sleep now. I'm exhausted. Good night, Miss Lizzie. Good night. You are a lucky girl. Well, you'll have to look out that it's not pinched. I'll give you that. Not Mr. Watkins. Oh, that creature couldn't afford a thing like that. Mrs. Kirpich give it to me. Oh, so you've made it up then, Rose. I'm very glad to hear it. Well, we'll be able to stop thinking of her as Mrs. Kirpich now. I never have thought of her as anything but Miss Elizabeth. Oh, those wretched carol singers again. We gave them some hapenies last night. King of Israel. Any room at the end? 